The views and opinions expressed in this presentation are those of secret elves whose names are protected and will remain anonymous. Whistleblowers will not be named to help keep their identity private and protect them from retaliation. Most of the statements are from third party witnesses and can be described as hearsay. They do not necessarily represent the position of the author. It should be quite obvious that Double Diamond has not approved, endorsed, embraced, or authorized this poem. It has not been reviewed by the PC police and much of it can be considered fake news. You can expect most of the content to be banned on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now sit back and enjoy the reading of Twas the Night Before Christmas in Eagle Rock. Merry Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas in old Eagle Rock with COVID all around and the residents in shock. The snow guns were working, new pumps made them strong, hoping Eagle Rock ski slopes stood open all winter long. This night is so special, and that's no baloney, with drinks flowing freely at the house of Maloney. The stocks, stockings were hung by the chimney with care, with hopes that the vaccine would quickly be there. The Lundquists were nestled, all snug in their bed, with hole-in-one visions streaming through Diane's head. Ruth Smith in his jammies, wife Ida in hers too, had just settled in for a much needed nap. Now I know the word nap does not rhyme with two, but children might hear this, what else could I do? They'd been playing all day with their dog, Junie B. They loved their new pet that was sure plain to see. When outside their house, as if right next door, came some very weird sounds. They listened closely for more. Like Ann Devenny's car going into a ditch, I could tell you who told me, but I'm not a snitch. I'd have jumped out of bed and ran down the hall, knocked over Bruce's golf bag and stepped on his balls. She took a good spill and had a bump on her head, but Bruce, he just laid there like a big hunk of lead. She yelled at him, Bruce, the whole neighborhood heard but he continued to lie there, not saying a word. We've got to find out what's all the commotion, but Brucey just yawned and moved in slow motion. I had to put on her robe and went to the phone, gave a call to Jim Sebia, but he was not home. The security guards were next on her list, but they were out driving, so that call was missed. She wandered about now, still sore from the fall, wondering if she'd be ready for next year's bocce ball. I had now heard some voices. There was all kinds of chatter. So she ran to the window to see what's the matter. Outside it was dark, so she barely could see. I didn't knew they were out there, but who could it be? She calmed herself down now. Ida wasn't real steady and saw someone moving. Could it be golf ball Eddie? She heard plenty of laughter, sounded like they'd been drinking just like party girls. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Or was it those people walking on the golf course, waving to Bruce and Ida, or so says my source. If it were walkers out there, I'll go out on a limb and say one of those walkers was Detective Jim. She rubbed at her eyes now to make sure she was right. Seems the fall that she took had affected her sight. What really was there, now so perfectly clear, was a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, his smile oh so merry, and a cute little elf named Linity, that's Carrie. With a red velvet coat and a hat, not a hoodie, as a matter of fact, it looked like Chaz Woody. I'd his eyes, she was certain, were not playing a trick. She knew now for certain that it must be St. Nick. To avoid all the cinders, Santa stayed on the roofs, so the poor little reindeer wouldn't injure their hooves. The reindeer were anxious, just wanting to fly. But St. Nick, he just calmed them with a wink of his eye. Like Cindy Ferrari with her large booming voice, Santa called out their names, they began to rejoice. Now Lemke, now Loosebrock, McLaughlin and Schoen, 
They look forward to tonight going from home to home. On Coopler, Shoemaker, on Reven and Depp, these reindeer were trained to move in lockstep. They flew very smoothly and oh so jet-like, just like Frank Sestero when he's riding his bike. No cost would be spared. They certainly weren't misers. They'd be traveling the world very much like the Kaisers. I'd have now heard a noise from up on her roof, the pawing and tapping of each little hoof. They danced and they pranced through the fog and the haze, just like our Pam Burke did back in her twerking days. Then all of a sudden, there came such a sound. Down the chimney came Santa. The house shook all around. She ran down the stairs, a little bit wary. Was it really St. Nick or Big John McCary? I had a look at the figure, his face all aglow, all covered with soot from his head to his toes. A bundle of presents he had flung on his back, looking like Lori Fyock with her large male sack. Bruce had left him some cookies and a bottle of wine. It was made by Keith Dasher. I'm sure it was fine. Santa looked at his list and it was perfectly clear that the Eagle Rock residents had been good all this year. He had brought lots of gifts for the young and the old, but first a few stories that he thought should be told. He started things off by reading a card saying thanks to some people that worked really hard. To our own caring network, a big round of applause, giving gifts to the food bank, what a wonderful cause. Thanks to Chef Artie for helping us out. Buko's market was great, of that there's no doubt. Some played social bocce at our old bocce park and had a great time, thanks to Cheryl and Mark. He looked again at his notes with a tear in his eye. 2020 really sucked, he let out with a sigh. You see, things were not normal throughout this past year, but neighbors did things that brought plenty of cheer. Always washing our hands and wearing a mask, trying just to relax was not a small task. Deb Archett was the champ of the game family feud. Her answers were great and her methods were shrewd. The fireworks were canceled for the 4th of July, but a great drive-in movie raised our spirits high. There wasn't a luau, no pigs on display, and the guys were upset they could not get a lay. Some activities were started as early as June with folks coming out to play Name That Tune. Karaoke was held for two wonderful nights. With the singing we heard, I'm surprised there weren't fights. There was time for the drinkers of wine, bourbon, and scotch. People brought great selections, and most were top-notch. Ethnic dinners once had were a thing of the past. Looking forward to next year, they should be a blast. We even had time for one amazing race. The Hanko team won that, due to their rapid pace. He bent over his sack now and untied the laces. It was time to poke fun, he tried to cover all bases. The gifts that he had were all just for fun. They weren't meant to be nasty, so don't come undone. Some comedy lessons for a number of folks in hopes that Steve Bruno might tell better jokes. Golf cart driving lessons for Sage and Gaudette. They got stuck in the mud. Marie was driving, I bet. A new roof for Bocce was on last year's list. Better be there for next year or some will be pissed. Shovels for the dog owners who refused to scoop and a few plastic bags to fill up with poop. For RCK Armstrong, some much better luck. His hole-in-one chance was missed, boy that sucks. For Glenda Masteller, some dry golfing clothes. How she fell in the water, I guess no one knows. A new Halloween costume for our Deb Archut. As the bride of Frankenstein, it was sure hard to putt. Congrats to Chaz Woody for bagging a buck, but instead of a rifle, he just used his truck. A hole-in-one ball to store in a safe place. Seems Pandolfi lost his, what a waste of an ace. A bunch of new bras for Peggy and Jane. To hang from the fan makes you think they're insane. Before leaving the scene, he had one last goodbye to a fellow we'll miss, and that's sure not a lie. We lost Dan Tripodi, resting now in God's arms, with a wonderful view and free from all harm. It was time now to leave, but before he did, he was reminded of something he was taught as a kid. The words that he spoke were still etched in his mind. Be nice to your neighbors and to others be kind. He now flew up the chimney and got back in his sleigh. 
Then he gave the command, up, up, and away. You could hear him so clearly as he drove out of sight. Merry Christmas, Eagle Rock, and to all a good night.